Hello everybody, Wolfpack here, and in this DCS World video, we are going to be going over Petrovich in the MI24P Hind. There have been quite a few quality of life changes and improvements to the Petrovich AI since the release of the MI24 Hind, and I figured it would be a good time to go over all of these changes and make a relatively comprehensive tutorial on how to operate Petrovich. Anyway, I hope you all at least find this video somewhat useful. There will be timestamps for the various topics that we will be going over, so you can click through the video to find what you need. Anyway, I hope you all enjoy. So the first thing we need to go over is the keybinds necessary to navigate the Petrovich AI menu. Here we are in the Petrovich AI helper layer here and we can see all of the key binds here that we need to get bound up. We have the Petrovich helper interface move left, right, up, and down. By default, these are bound to the W, A, S, and D keys. And you can see I actually have these bound to a four-way hat on my joystick, and that works quite well, if I do say so myself. Additionally, all of these commands have two actions. You can move left short and move left long, you will have two different actions in the Petrovich AI menu, depending on how long you press the button for. We will get more into that later though, and it should make a bit more sense when I demonstrate it. We also have the Petrovich AI helper show hide. This will actually show or hide the actual interface for Petrovich. This is left control V by default. Additionally, there are other Petrovich commands that you can get bound up depending on the MI24P control layer you are in. For example, we are in the MI24P Copilot Gunner layer here, and we have the Petrovich AI Helper filter enabled. We can see the Petrovich AI Helper commands here that we can actually bind. We have the AI Helper interface show hide. I have this to left control V, However, if you wanted a different uh, show hide command in the CPG seat versus the pilot seat, for example, you could do that because DCS will use whatever key binds are appropriate for the position you are in. So if I was the pilot and I wanted this to be left control B, for example, um, I could do that. I could bind that up differently in the pilot position versus the CPG position. I hope that made sense. One thing that the developers have added is the ability to order Petrovich around without even accessing the Petrovich AI menu. So if I was in the CPG seat and I wanted Petrovich, who is in the pilot seat in the scenario, to conduct a 180 degree evasive maneuver, I could order him to do that without even bringing up the AI helper interface. The MI24P pilot control layer also has these sorts of commands, so we can order Petrovich to cycle the missile type or prepare the weapons without even bringing up the Petrovich AI helper interface. So that just gives you a little idea of all the different keybinds you can utilize for Petrovich AI and how much versatility there is if you wanted to utilize that. Some of these commands which may be useful are the order enable weapons keybind in the MI24 pilot layer. This allows the player in the pilot position to tell Petrovich AI in the forward cockpit to enable weapon systems. This takes around three minutes for all systems for the ATGM's employment to warm up. Petrovich will report about the systems when they are ready. Additionally, you can also request aircraft control this button is used to request control of the aircraft and multiplayer, and uh, if the player in the front cockpit takes control of the aircraft, they can press C to request control. And if you are in the pilot position and want to take back over control, you would press C in this instance. Here we are in the CPG seat, and I am going to showcase the Petrovich AI whenever we are up here, and Petrovich is the pilot. So we are going to bring up the Petrovich UI by pressing left control V by default. Then we'll bring up this HSI here surrounded by four boxes. The top right box is our desired altitude. The center box is our heading and the left top box is our desired airspeed. 
The bottom left box shows what mode we are in. We are currently in hover mode. To increase our desired altitude, we press up long and we will see the top right box is changing. Let's go to around 200 meters here, 199 meters. That is good enough for me. We can see Petrovic will bring us up and he will maintain a relatively good hover. Definitely a better hover than I could manage myself. Petrovich will also automatically raise the landing gear, so that is something we do not have to worry about ourselves. Now, to change what mode we are in, we can press left short to go to hover translate mode, which I will show off, and we can press it again to go to combat mode. And we can cycle through all these very mo various modes. I am going to show off hover translate mode here now. So, while in hover translate mode, we can hold left or right long, and Petrovich will translate the helicopter left or right. So let's go left, and he will stop, and we can go right, and he will slide right as long as you have the button pressed. So I'm still holding right long, and he will translate the helicopter like so. Additionally, if I go back to hover mode by pressing left short, we can just change our heading by pressing left or right long, and that will move the bug on the HSI around. So let's turn to 090, and Petrovich will swing the helicopter to 090. Of course, if I do right long, we can go back to 180, like so. Let's Killing just adjust that slightly. Now, there is another way we can actually turn the helicopter, and that is by pressing right short, and that will bring up this pepper in the center of the screen. So if I have a target off to 270-ish, off to the west here, I can press right short again, like that building looks interesting. I wanna look at it, press right short, and Petrovich will turn us on that heading. So that is another way we can have Petrovich turn the helicopter and move us around. Now, to adjust our airspeed, we are going to press up short. And now Petrovich will go to 60 kilometers per hour. We can also press this a couple of times. Let's start really moving here. 200 kilometers per hour, please. And there we go, those are the fundamentals to how to control Petrovich. You can see now that we are actually moving, we have some airspeed going, in the bottom left hand corner, we are in flight mode. And flight mode is very similar to hover mode, but we cannot, whenever we cycle left, the hover translate mode is no longer there, so we just go to combat mode as you can see. And we will be discussing combat mode in the next segment here. Here we are in the CPG seat, about to commence an attack run on some enemy targets off to around 1 o'clock. Let's bring up the Petrovich UI here. We can see we are moving 200 kilometers per hour at an altitude of 459 meters. We are going to start dropping airspeed, so we are going to press down short a couple of times to come down to 60 kph. Additionally, I'm going to hold down long to bring us down to an altitude of around 150 meters. You can see we are still in flight mode. To attack these targets, I am going to do one attack while in hover mode, and then one attack run while moving at a relatively quick speed here. We are going to do these attacks with our ATGMs. You can see we are down to 60 kph here, and we are killing off our altitude. Now that we are nice and slow, I am going to turn on our observe, which will open the periscope doors, and Petrovich will actually fly a bit smoother when in this mode to avoid damaging the gyros for the periscope. Let's go to our periscope and take a look. We automatically switch to combat mode as well, as you can see by the bottom left hand box. We are going to search for targets and I actually think I already see them. Yep, we already have targets over here off to one o'clock. That will be what we are attacking. However, a little bit to the right, there are some other vehicles moving. Now, if I wanted Petrovich to turn the helicopter toward these vehicles, which are on the move, 
I would press up short while looking through the periscope and in combat mode. We will see the bug on the HSI turn to a heading of 189 degrees, and Petrovich will turn the helicopter towards those particular targets. However, for this attack run, we will be attacking these targets here, and we will go for this lead element. So we are going to line ourselves up and press up short. Additionally, I think it's time to bring ourselves to a hover. It looks like we are in range of the target, so we are going to press left short to go in the flight mode and down short to drop our airspeed to zero. This will get us into a hover. We are also going to select an ATGM. We will shoot from station number one. Now that we are in a hover, I think it is time for us to attack a target. We have station number one selected. Let's go to our periscope. To tell Petrovich to get us into launch parameters, we are going to press up long. Now, while in hover mode, Petrovich will dip the nose for a few seconds to get into launch parameters and then nose back up to maintain his hover. So, a good practice is to order Petrovich to dip the nose down, getting you into launch parameters, and then hold your weapon release button, so that way, once you are in launch parameters, the missile will go off the rail. So, let's go ahead and do that. We are going to press up long, Petrovich will nose over, and we will get a tone, and we are going to press and hold, there we go, rifle. And let's try to actually hit and destroy this target if we can. Please and thank you. Maintaining, and there we go. Target destroyed. We can do this again as well. Another demonstration. Let's go ahead and switch to station number two. Go back to our periscope. Let's look at this target. Up long. Rifle. Let's try to hit this target here. There we go. Impact, target destroyed. Now I think it is time to attack these targets while the helicopter is moving. We are going to switch off our observe, which will shut the periscope door shutters. Additionally, it will seize up all the gyros to avoid damaging them while in movement. And we are going to press left short to go to hover mode and press up short a couple of times to start moving at, oh, 120 kph should be fine for this. Now, attacking while on the move is more or less the same. Petrovich, when you press up long, will get your ATGM into launch parameters. Let's go ahead and an select another station here. And now we are going to turn on our observe. Petrovich will fly a bit smoother when the observe is on. Our doors are open. Let's go to our periscope. And wait a few seconds. We should be able to move our periscope. There we go. Move our periscope down towards the targets. And this is going to be a little close here. Let's go for this one and press up long. And Petrovich will hopefully get us into launch parameters here. Although we may start taking fire here as they are quite close. Additionally, we are kind of high up and it is easier for Petrovich to actually get into launch parameters while down low. Anyway, here we go. And I just missed. However, now it's time to go left along and we are going to break 90 degrees to the left so we can re-engage. Also, if we close our observe turn off observe which will close the doors Petrovich will fly more aggressively now that the gyros are stationary and won't be damaged let's come back around for another attack run so we are currently in flight mode let's drop down by pressing down short to 150 kilometers per hour and we are going to press right long to turn ourselves back around towards the target area should be relatively easy to see thanks to all the smoke out there let's see if we can actually find our targets observe is still off so the periscope doors are closed and there we have our smoke so we are going to align ourselves up with that let's keep coming right to around 250 
and let's get ready for another attack run. Let's select station number four for our ATGMs. And additionally, let's turn our observe on, which will open our periscope doors. Let's go to our periscope and look at our targets here. Takes a few seconds here. There we go, we know our targets are off to the right. There they are. Let's have Petrovich up short to line ourselves up. So he's going to turn the helicopter onto target. We'll engage this one right here. And we're going to press up long. This will tell Petrovich to get us into launch parameters and begin an attack run. Hopefully I don't miss this time. It's all good practice though. Closing in nicely. Again, it is better to do this at a lower altitude. There we go. Ready, fire. Rifle. ATGM away. Hold on target. Impact. Down long. 180 degree turn out of here. And close our shutter doors. Blocking up the gyros to avoid damage. We are currently taking fire. Here we are on the ground, and now we have Petrovich as the CPG, and we will be in the pilot seat. So let's go ahead and bring up the Petrovich AI, and it will bring up a reticle here surrounded by three boxes. The top center box shows what heading our head is actually looking at. So if we turn left, we are looking at 154 degrees, right 295. The bottom left box shows how many degrees to the left or right we are looking from our relative heading. So we are looking right 083 degrees and left 071 degrees. The bottom right hand corner shows how many degrees up or down we are looking at. So there is that information as well. These boxes can actually be disabled by the mission editor so you do not have to have them and you can just have the triangle reticle here instead. First things first, before we get into combat though, we want Petrovich to go ahead and warm up the weapons. So we are going to press up long for that to happen and we will see the boxes surrounding our reticle turn from red to yellow. They will remain yellow while Petrovich warms up the weapons. Additionally, once they are warmed up and we press up long once again, that will allow Petrovich to free fire on targets if they are in launch parameters. Now the turning on weapons command does not only affect ATGMs, it does turn on the weapon circuits to power up all weapon systems. Petrovich will also engage the computing device that works with most unguided weapons like the main gun and rockets. And Petrovich will also engage the 9K113 ATGM related systems to warm up. The warm-up process for the ATGM-related systems do take around three minutes. However, the powering on the unguided weapons and whatnot are pretty fast and are done in about 10 seconds. Here we are closing in on some enemy targets and I am going to showcase how to utilize Petrovich to fire ATGMs. So first thing is first, let's go ahead and bring up the Petrovich UI by pressing left control V by default and we are going to press up short to have Petrovich turn observe on and start searching for targets through his periscope. So we can see the observe is on. He can't move the site yet, but he will let us know when he can in fact move the site. And we should see a list of targets in the bottom left hand corner. We can see the targets are hostile. We have a couple of APCs and some ground targets. To select the targets, we will press right short to actually select it and we can see this list is automatically updating as we get closer and closer and can, Petrovich can make out more information about the target. Let's just select this leading APC and we can see we have a positive tone. He will let us know when we are in range. However, there are two ways we can order Petrovich to fire. The first way is pressing up long and this will tell Petrovich to go weapons free and he will fire at will or we can fire by using our weapon release button. We are going to press up long. We will see the boxes go green around our reticle and Petrovich will fire. Holding on target, impact, target destroyed. 
Let's go ahead and break. Petrovich will automatically turn the observe off as well. Additionally, Petrovich has logic to analyze your flight parameters, so he will automatically turn the observe off if he senses the pilot is getting close to maneuvering and damaging the gyros. The best practice, however, is to ask Petrovich to switch observe off after attacking and before maneuvering. You do that with down short. Whenever you ask Petrovich to switch observe off, he will also switch off the missile station and you won't get the annoying launch authorization tone. But if Petrovich is switching off observe automatically because he senses your reckless flying, he doesn't touch the missile stations and will keep them ready. When he senses that you have stopped dangerous maneuvering, he will re-engage the observe and start looking for his last target again if able to. I am now going to showcase how to utilize the weapon release button to fire our ATGM. So let's bring up Petrovich and we are going to first press up long again to order Petrovich to hold fire. We are closing in on the targets which are over there and I am going to fly smoothly and tell him to uh, turn the observe on and look for the targets. Hopefully he can pick something up quickly. Observe on, there we go, BTR-80, right short to select. Target acquired, let's line ourselves up. Targets in range, we are being shot at, which is just lovely. Okay, let's line ourselves up. Weapon release. Okay, rifle. Impact, target destroyed. Observe off, we can also manually turn the observe off by pressing down short, but we are getting the heck out of here. There are a few other things we can have Petrovich control while he is in the CPG seat. Let's go ahead and bring him up and press left short. This will actually bring up our countermeasures panel, which is located in the co-pilot gunner position. So we have our interval two and four. Two is every three seconds and four is every five seconds. So that is how often you will deploy countermeasures. We can press up short to change our interval. We can press right short to change the series of countermeasures. So how many countermeasures we will launch at a time. We can do a series of four or a series of 16. Down short, we'll change what side we are firing our countermeasures from, like which basket they are coming from. We can do the right side, left side, or both sides for countermeasures and then we can press long down to change if we are firing flare or chaff we are currently not carrying any chaff so he automatically defaults to shooting flares here Here in the gameplay settings, we can see we have our F10 view options. This will affect the Petrovich IFF if we have it set to auto in the mission editor. We can see that from the labels tab, we have various settings, full, abbreviated, symbol, dot neutral, and no labels. Full and abbreviated will allow the CPG to automatically know the unit's coalition and unit type Again, if set to auto, this is the list of units that Petrovich is targeting whenever we are having him scan with the periscope. Symbol only allows Petrovich to automatically know the unit's coalition, but at the same time, Petrovich will also be able to understand the type of unit if he gets closer to identify it. And no label or dot requires the CPG to manually identify everything about the unit, so it will take a bit longer. The F10 view options will also affect Petrovich's ability to identify targets. Map only and my aircraft require Petrovich to manually identify the targets. And with fog of war and allies only, the CPG will automatically identify the unit's coalition and unit type. The other IFF settings that we can control are in the mission editor here. We have AI IFF detection mode. It's a drop down panel with four options here. Auto will use the F10 map and label settings in the main menu that we just went over. Simple will instantly identify the coalition and unit type. 
When set to label, it will use realistic spotting to try to determine the unit type, but then automatically it will determine the coalition. And realistic will require realistic spotting to actually figure out the unit type and what coalition it is a part of. So this is the most time consuming option for the AI CPG. We have a few more settings here that do pertain to the Petrovich AI. We have the hide boxes in the pilot AI menu. So instead of having the three boxes surrounding the reticle, we will just have the reticle itself. We also have the track air target. So this will give Petrovich the ability to actually track aerial targets with his periscope. There is one more setting in the mission editor and it is called disable multi crew. This is related to Petrovich. If we enable this setting for the client slot, then in multiplayer, players won't be able to multi-crew this helicopter. It will have only one available slot, and the Petrovich AI will be available just like in single player. Last but not least, I wanted to go over some settings for Petrovich in the MI24P Hind special settings located in the main menu. The first one is Petrovich AI Auto Handover. This will allow Petrovich to automatically take over the controls if you are flipping between the seats with the 1 and 2 buttons by default. If this option is selected, when you switch from the pilot seat to the CPG seat, Petrovich will automatically take over flying the helicopter. If you have this option unticked, it will mean you will keep control if you jump to the forward cockpit, and Petrovich won't mess with the flying controls unless you give him the control order by pressing C by default. The AI color scheme controls the color palette for the targeting list. The default is the NATO color scheme, which I was using. The other option is the coalition color scheme, which will paint units in coalition colors. Blue or red for blue or red coalitions, yellow for unknown, and gray for neutral. And last but not least, we have the AI voice language. This controls which language Petrovich AI will use for the sound voiceovers. Auto is default and will check what cockpit avionics language you have it set to. If you have the Russian cockpit set as native, he will speak Russian, English is English. Off will disable the voices for Petrovich altogether, and separate English and Russian languages to force the languages and disregard what cockpit avionics you are using. Well folks, that is all for today's video. I hope you all found it useful. There is definitely a lot more to go over when it comes to Petrovich, but I believe I covered most of the basics. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed, and I will see you all on the next one.